Good morning and welcome to our service here at Trinity Lutheran. We are delighted to have you with us and joining us today as we praise our God. We are already halfway through July. We're entering into the, the warm part of the summer. And I was thinking, Kim, when you were growing up, what are some of the things that you remember about summer? I remember in Minnesota, it got really hot, really sticky, and lots of mosquitoes. Do you remember the mosquitoes? Yes, yeah. and that's one of the things we appreciate about being in Washington. No mosquitoes. Or less, yes. far, far less. But I remember those hot, hot days of July, being out in the hay field, picking up bales. Um, I was a little bit of a tomboy. And I also remember helping my mom in her garden. She grew a big garden, lots of carrots and peas to pick. You also rode? Lots of horses throughout those summer days, he bet. In fact, she was enjoying creation, just like we all enjoy creation. There's much we can thank God um, for in creation, but also with regards to our salvation. And as we gather here today, we are encouraged that even during those times when things are not going so well in life, God continues to be there for us.
This morning we talked about the wonderful summer months and what kind of things we can do and there are times in our lives that it isn't always so sunny out right no uh, there is not only days of rain but there's days of pain sorrow heartache we we all experience those things maybe what are some of those things that are weighing heavily upon you at this time in your life uh, right now, I, I was just visiting with our daughter out in California, and her life has been kind of turned upside down since the COVID thing came out. And uh, I worry about our youth. I worry about our children. I worry about you sometimes. And I worry about you. Uh, even though things in some ways are, are going okay, there's always concerns, especially when we're not able to, to be there. And that's probably what I miss most, not being able at times to connect with our kids. I mean, we do it over the phone, but uh, 
is so much different it's when not, we were able to be there, the give them hugs, uh, greet our grandchildren. Um, I don't know about you, I'm sure we're going to be talking a little bit later on about uh, the pain and the sorrow and how things sometimes get messed up in life. And yet, as we gather here today, we do so with hope. Mm. Uh, because life is hopeful because we have a God who is there for us. So in spite of what happens to us, we have someone who is by our side. And so as we continue, uh, we're going to go to God in our prayers, asking that he would continue to be with us. Please join us. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you with joy and concerns. We rejoice that you look upon us as your children and that you care for us. But we have so many concerns and cares and they often weigh us down. There is suffering in the world. In my life, I experience brokenness and pain. While I desire to cast my cares upon you, I find I usually pick them back up again and they only add more anxiety and stress to my life. Please help me to learn to cast my cares on you as I learn what it means to rest and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we bring before you our concerns, we lift up these people from our congregation. We pray for Christine, Alice, Terry, Pat, along with Anthony, Mike, Molly, Henry and his family. We remember Spiro, Steve and Mary Jo, Brooks, Priscilla, and Stan Sandy. You, Heavenly Father, know what is going on in the lives of, of these people. Be their strength, their source of, of healing, and their hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, help me to hear you saying, I am your hope above all the other voices. Lord, your word says you are the hope for the hopeless. So I am running to you with both hands stretched out. Lord, fill me up with hope and strength. Be the anchor for my soul when life tosses me around. Be with others who are struggling. Help all of us, your children, to withstand any trials that come our way. Remind us once more that you can do far more than I could ever imagine or request. God, you are my hope and I trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we come before you on behalf of the world that you have created. Please send sunshine and rain in proper measure, especially those areas where They've been receiving too much rain. Uh, we pray that it would dry out or work areas they haven't received enough moisture that you would provide so that the earth would bring forth its fruit. We ask that you would bring an end to war and violence and that you would be with the leaders of our country, of our state and our community so that we may be able to live in peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Establish the work of my hands by helping me to be productive, patient, focused, and insightful. Keep me from distractions which hinder my work instead of helping it. May your spirit lead me in my work and help me to be joyful, creative, worshipful, constantly reminding me of your love and that you are the reason I have life. Teach me to align my work, my family, my church life, and rest in a way that would harmonize with your will for me. Continue to send the Holy Spirit to me that I might bear spiritual fruit. And as I work, Lord, I fix my eyes on Jesus and his finished work on the cross that gave me a treasure I could not earn, rest that I would not otherwise experience, and a living hope that will fuel me to work for the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We come before you on behalf of 
the youth and the children. During this time of the virus, their lives have been turned upside down. They've not been able to attend school like usual. They haven't been able to make as many connections with, with friends. And we ask Heavenly Father that you would be with them, helping them through this difficult time. We pray that you would also be with the parents, grandparents, that they would have the wisdom and the patience and the strength to encourage the youth and the children at this time. We also ask that you would be with those who are in our armed forces, as well as our police. Help them to serve with integrity and help them protect our communities. We ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. It is so good to be able to visit with you today. I'm going to talk about something that I think you are familiar with, and that is getting hurt. The other day, I don't even want to tell you this, but I fell down and I hurt myself and I actually had to put a bandage on. And if I were to take this bandage off, oh, you might see there's a little spot there that I kind of scraped my skin off and it, it hurt a little bit. I would venture to guess that you have put on bandages. And why do you put on bandages? Maybe because you, you bumped your knee or your elbow or maybe cut your finger or something. And when that happens, it hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, we experience pain. And one of the things that we do is when we are, are hurt is of course we want to get better. And so if we cut ourselves or bruise ourselves, uh, one of the things that we will oftentimes do is, is go to the medicine cabinet. And in the medicine cabinet, uh, we may be able to take some bandages out. And I'm sure you have bandages at home. And we put those bandages on where it hurts, uh, where we have uh, injured ourselves, And, and then we, we pray for healing. You know, as we go through life, we get hurt and sometimes it's physically but you know sometimes what gets hurt is our feelings or maybe our hearts have you ever gotten hurt because someone has yelled at you or said that they were angry against you or mad at you you know that hurts me if someone says that to me so in some ways we can get hurt when we could have pain not just from things that happen to us by getting hit but also by what people say but as we gather here today, I, I have some good news for you. And the good news comes from, we have a God who cares about us and understands what it is to hurt and to feel pain. And God sent his son, Jesus, and, and you know about him because he, we sing about him and we rejoice that, that he came to earth for us. And, and why did Jesus come to earth? Well, in some ways, Jesus came to earth, and it sounds horrible, he came to earth so that he, could get, he would get hurt. He would get hurt so that you and I could get better. And that is the joy that we have, that Jesus is our Savior who came, and he helps us get better. Get better in our relationship with God, but also because he is true God, he is also one that can help us with regards to when we get hurt physically, when we scrape ourselves. So as we finish this today, I would just like to ask you to talk to your parents or grandparents about some of the things which cause you to have pain, which make you hurt. It may be getting scuffed up by falling down, but it may be with regards to what people have said to you. But then I would like you to talk with them a little bit about how Jesus is there and how Jesus is one who can bring healing when we are hurt. Knowing that God loves us so much that he sent Jesus so that even when we die, Jesus is going to make us better again and we're going to live forever with him. So whenever I see a medicine box or something like this, a kit, I see that Red Cross, and it always reminds me of Jesus, that Jesus is the one who truly brings healing. 
The Old Testament lesson is from the 44th chapter in Isaiah. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let him foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is from the eighth chapter of Romans. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Your creation waits in eager expectation for the Son of God to be revealed. The creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts know the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the 13th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seeds stand for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the, in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Standing in calm. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I look upon this world, there's two things which are completely opposite that I can observe. I can see tremendous beauty, but I also can see carnage. And so can you. Our hearts can be filled with, with amazement as we look upon this world which God has created, and our joy might break forth in, in music, such as found in this famous hymn, How Great Thou Art, as we think about what God has done and, and how wonderful this world is. You know, hear again these words from that hymn. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world your hands hath made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. And then when that happens, would our soul sing? How great thou art. It continues. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, and see the brook and feel the gentle breeze. You know, what do our souls exclaim if we experience that, that harmony, that beauty? How great thou art. Yes, there's majesty in this world, but there's also the opposite of that as well. There's carnage, there's suffering, there's pain, and there is death. And these things come about because of a variety of reasons. Sometimes suffering comes about because of what other people do. We see this as, as wars uh, erupt. We also see suffering because of the, the recent uh, rioting which has happened even in our own country and how people have suffered because of that. Suffering has also come about because of the, the pandemic. This virus has, has impacted some people physically. You know, we realize that. But even if people have not been impacted physically, our community, our state, our country, our world has been impacted emotionally and financially because of this. And there has been suffering as a count of this. We also acknowledge that suffering sometimes happens because we do things which are wrong. Or sometimes, you know, there's suffering in the world and we have no idea why it is happening. Now, what is the response when people suffer? Um, the response might be anger, might be hopelessness, frustration. Uh, there's a lot of things which seem to well up in a person as they are experiencing suffering. But one thing which also often accompanies it is something which St. Paul brings up in the eighth chapter of Romans. And here he speaks about groaning as a response to suffering. And when he speaks about groaning, to me, it's, it's a, a very deep word. Uh, it expresses the fact that, that there is anguish as a result of this, this suffering, and that's why they are groaning. But groaning also entails that longing that they wish that what is broken, what was lost, would now be made whole. St. Paul speaks about groaning, but he also says some other things. And these are words of encouragement that I would like you to once again hear. St. Paul writes, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that we will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. This passage reminds us that God is, is working all things out. So we are to hang in there, not give up, but hold on to him. This past week, as I was making phone calls, I was able to contact a, a member from our congregation. I asked how things are going for him and his family, and he said things are going well. Of course, things are different because of this virus and, and how that has shut things down. Uh, we talked a little bit about the things that we were doing in our lives. And before we left, he, he mentioned something that he had just finished doing. And what did he complete? It was 
putting a puzzle together. Most of us are very familiar with puzzles. Uh, puzzles usually uh, are there right away for young children. Uh, and we give young children puzzles because it is a great learning experience for them. As they learn how to put a puzzle together, they, they learn eye-hand coordination. Also, with regards to puzzles, it helps them understand that there are different pieces, and as you arrange them, uh, you get a whole. And the whole, lots of times, is a lot more beautiful than, than the individual parts. And so we give children puzzles to complete. But it's not only children who complete puzzles. As people get older, they continue doing it, not so that they can learn eye-hand coordination, but it is a way to pass time, and it is enjoyable. And the joy comes from knowing that, you know, you have something which seems to be completely messed up. You know, you take a puzzle, and what do you do is you, you dump it out on a table, or maybe for a child, you pour it out on the floor, and the pieces are, are all mixed up, uh, some upside down, and what you need to do is, is try to arrange this so that this carnage is no longer a mess, but it ends up being a beautiful picture. And anyone who has put a puzzle together realizes that if you are persistent, you know, in the end, you will have something that looks beautiful. In many ways, as we think about puzzles, I want to say it reminds me of life. And I could probably describe this in, in many ways, but what comes to my mind is this, that our lives are, are made up of a lot of different pieces. And as we live our lives, we try to put those pieces together so that, that something beautiful emerges as, as we grow and as we mature. And so we put together the pieces of education, of, of growth uh, physically and emotionally. You know, we think about the pieces that come into our life that, that make things wonderful. And we think about it as family and as friends, having a good job, being able to, to have recreation, being able to have a place where you call home. And when, as all of these things kind of fit into place, you know, you can have what you might say is, it's a beautiful life. And that is what I think the goal of most people is to have, you know, a beautiful life. But is that always the reality? In Paul's letter to the Romans, he spoke about the peace and love that that you and I have as Christians because of Jesus Christ. You know, last week we spoke about how in Christ there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. We spoke about how uh, the Spirit has come into us and the Spirit is leading us. And because of that, we have peace and we have life. Now, if you stop there, you might think, well, once you become a Christian, um, even though there might be a little bit of struggles with regards to sin, you know, life should be a breeze, and you should have no problems. But you and I know that such is not the case. There is suffering in the world, and being a Christian doesn't make you immune from suffering. You know, all people, to one degree or another, will suffer. And St. Paul, as he speaks about suffering, even actually wants us to take even a step back. And he reminds us, it's not just people who groan because of what's going on in, in this world, but actually creation itself is groaning. And what is it longing for? Yes, for that pain and that ugliness to cease, but also that beauty and harmony and peace would be restored. Now, before we go on and, and talking about how God can bring about peace and, and how he can help us no matter what is going on in our lives, I would like you, along with me, to just kind of stop and think a little bit about what are some of the pieces in your life which are causing unrest, sorrow, pain, or maybe even suffering. And sometimes it is because pieces which have been added to our life. For example, 
We didn't ask for arthritis or cancer to come into our life, but it seems like that is now part of the picture of our life. And it's painful. There may be some financial concerns that we have. You know, that's been added to our life. And, and what is our response? You know, that is not something that we wish to have in the picture that we seek to, to portray in our life. But there's not only things which have been added to our life, but also there's things that seem to be taken away. At times, pieces taken away from, from our life that leave us feeling empty, leave us feeling um, not whole, or in other words, we suffer on account of that, and we may groan. And what are some of those things which are missing, which, which cause people to groan? Well, sometimes it might be not having a good relationship with your child, with your spouse, with your parents, or maybe even with your grandchildren. Maybe not having good friends, not having a good job, not having stability in, in your life. There's a lot of things that we could say seem to be missing in people's lives. And sometimes it's things which have been removed, such as the death of a loved one. And boy, that has left a, a big missing piece in their lives. And the question is, as, as we experience suffering in this world and where there is groaning, and we will all do it at one time or another, you know, the question which is asked is, where is God in all of this? Why isn't he coming to my aid at this particular time and helping me out right now? Well, St. Paul writes to the Christians. He doesn't deny the reality or problems that we have here in this world with pain, with heartache, with suffering, with loss. He also doesn't always try to explain exactly why things happen. You know, as a pastor, I can't always say to a person, I know exactly why this is happening in your life. I can't say that. I am not God. And oftentimes, we do not know. Sometimes, as we look back in our life, we could say, you know, I could see where God has used that experience in my life, which was not comfortable to prepare me for what is now happening in my life. You know, sometimes we see that, but that's not always the case. So what does St. Paul say to encourage you and me as we experience suffering here in this world, as we experience groaning? Well, he would like to, to use a comparison, and that is to help us. He would like to compare the suffering that we have with the great glory that is coming our way. And even though he does not want to minimize the pain and the hurt that we have in life, that in some ways is nothing compared to what God has in store for you and me in the future. And it's because we can look to the future and realize that the picture is going to be different that we can make it through any trial or tribulation that comes our way, no matter what that suffering may be. Now, how can St. Paul be so confident, encouraging Christians to hang in there and don't give up? It's because God has already acted in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And as we look at Jesus Christ, we see how God is working all things out. We look in the Bible and we acknowledge that from the fall of Adam and Eve, there has been sorrow, suffering, and death in this world. And yet into this world which, in which there is carnage, God sent his son, Jesus Christ. And how can you describe Jesus? Jesus was God's yes to creation. Jesus was God's yes to you and to me. Think about it. As Christ carried on his ministry, he sought to bring about restoration of the whole person, body, spirit, and heart. As we look at Christ's ministry, you know, he preached the good news, saying that he was the way to the Father and the way to this, this glorious future, and he forgave people their sins. But he was not just concerned with their hearts and souls, he was concerned with their bodies as well. 
And that is why he fed the sick, he, he cured uh, the lame, he brought sight to the blind, uh, we see him uh, healing the sick and even raising the dead. Christ also had power over creation as he calmed the storm as the disciples were threatened. But as we look at Christ, and I think this is very important, the most amazing thing that comes about is his resurrection after his death for your sins and mine. Jesus arose with a glorified body. And St. Paul in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians reminds you and me that that is going to be our body. Um, that as we are raised from the dead, we're going to be raised uncorruptible. We're not going to die again. We're not going to experience pain. We're not going to experience sickness. We're not going to experience sorrow because we're going to be living life as God intended it to be, living with him in the new earth and in the new heaven. That is something which is, which is coming our way. And as we gather here today, I want you to keep that picture in mind. And it's very important. You know, as you pour out a puzzle, for a speak, so to speak, on a table, uh, you don't know what it's going to look like. And one of the things that I've always done as I put together puzzles, although maybe there's one or two times I have not done it, is I want to know what the picture looks like at the end. Uh, because as you look at the picture, you could start understanding, oh, I understand how these pieces fit together. And, and, it, and it helps. It helps as you're putting the puzzle together to see what's going to happen and what it's going to be like in the end. For Christians, that's how we are to live our lives. In lives which sometimes are turned upside down, which are messed up. St. Paul encourages you and me to, to look to how it's going to end. And as we remember that, you and I, can have the strength that we need, the patience that we need as well to make it through any trial or suffering that comes our way. Amen.
we would once again like to thank you for your support of Trinity Lutheran Church. We appreciate the prayers that you send, um, your connection with other people, as well as your offerings. And we ask that as you are able, you would continue to remember our ministry, which is happening here. And now we invite you to pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. There's no space that his love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me in with your arms spread wide. Take me in like an orphan child. Never let go, never leave my side. I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I am holding on. I am. Love like this, oh my God, to find. I am overwhelmed with a joy. song this is my hallelujah come this is why it's to you i run reminder, our church is open again, and we are having services, an 8.30 praise worship service, and then an 11 o'clock traditional worship service, and it would be great if you would join us. I think there is still a list going. You can call the office, talk to Sue. And we would love to have you here, but if you're not able to make it because of concerns, we will continue to come to you every Sunday with these online worship services. So until then, go in peace, serve, serve the, the Lord. Lord. Thanks be to God.